All right, today we're doing 7-8, creating and exploring similar figures. And if you're using our book, I really encourage you to check out page 359. They talk about how movies sometimes are made using similar figures. That if you're going to try to have, I don't know, the Empire State Building and a gorilla climbing up the outside, you either need to make a ginormous gorilla and then uh, reserve the building and all kinds of stuff, or it's a whole lot easier just to make a similar figure, make a model of it that's maybe two, three feet tall, and then have your gorilla do that. Um, I thought it was really interesting. That's page 359. And we want to talk about uh, similar figures. And first thing about similar figures is I want to say there are really going to be two things that look the same. So if I were to take a picture of you and then have one copy that's on a 4 inch by 6 inch and then another one that's an 8 inch by 10 inch, um, you should look the same in both, that your faces would be similar figures if it's the same picture. It's just really enlarging an object or shrinking down an object, something like that. So first thing I want to say for similar figures, Roman numeral 1, is that their corresponding angles are congruent. So one, their corresponding angles are congruent. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to whip down on the page a little bit, but I'll be back up if you're still copying. But if we have these two triangles or similar figures, if I could go through and measure this angle right here, angle M, and angle Q with a protractor, I should get the exact same thing. And same thing if I were to go and get like angle N and angle R, those two would be the same, and angle P here and angle S. So the corresponding angles just means the angles that are in the same place. So say the angle between the longest side, you know, here and here, angles between that longest side and the shortest side there and there would be the same. So that's what we mean by Roman or number one. And get rid of all those. The corresponding angles are congruent. Second thing, the lengths of corresponding sides make equal ratios. So the lengths of corresponding sides make equal ratios. And there's really two ways to go through and do these ratios. Uh, but what we're looking at is, so say you're looking still at like the longest side or the side that's between the two acute angles. If I were to take and say here, I have side 8 and side 12. Uh, I should be able to do 8 over 12 because those two sides are corresponding. So that gives me a ratio. And that should equal the ratio of any other pair of corresponding sides. So here I have my 6. And my 9, those are the second longest side, so I should be able to do 6 over 9. And last but not least, my purple sides over here, I have a 4 and a 6. So I should be able to see that that equals 4 over 6. And for those, we could go back and check those ratios several different ways. We did that previously. You could go through and reduce all the fractions. And if I reduce those, they're all going to end up being, well, let's see, we could divide by 4. So I get 2 thirds. So all of them end up being 2 thirds. So I know they're equal that way. Another way that you could do, if you have something that's hard to reduce, you could say, I'm just going to look at those first two, you could do the cross products. That cross product should be equal. So 8 times 9 is 72. 6 times 12 is also 72. So we know those two ratios are equal. Then you could go back and do that with this other fraction. You could say 6 times 6 is 36. 9 times 4 is 36. So yep, they're all equal. So it's really kind of up to you as far as how you check them. The book recommends going through and kind of doing them that way, where you have like one side on one triangle over the corresponding side of the second triangle. And that's probably the best way to do it, uh, but maybe make the comment. You also could, so I'm recommending doing it the book's way, but you also could if you wanted to say, right, I'm going to do 6 over 4 here, and if they're similar figures, that's going to equal 9 over 6 on the other triangle as well. And there we have like 3 over 2 or 1.5 for both. But there's some drawbacks of doing it that way. Um, so recommend doing it one side on one triangle or one object to the corresponding side on the other. The very last thing I want to say is when we have similar figures is look at the notation. There's a way to say, okay, I have these triangles here and these two triangles are similar to each other. And it has a little bit to do with the, 
the congruence symbol, it's the equals with a tilde, a little squiggly above it. But here we use this notation. So the notation uses just what was up above the equals in that congruent thing, so the little tilde. In my example, if you want to quick pause it and then draw the triangles down below, you could. Maybe you already did. But you should be able to say, all right, I'm going to say triangles, do a little triangle. M and P is similar to triangle. Now, on this first one, I started here at M at the top, the largest angle, and went around this way. So I have to do the exact same thing on my second triangle. Start with the largest angle, the one that's on top in this case. So that'd be angle Q. Then I go to my smallest angle, which is R. And my next angle, the last one, which is S. And the reason we do that now is if we know that these two figures are similar, angle M is congruent to angle Q. Those two angles are equal. And angle P is congruent or is equal to angle S. And then the same thing for N and R there in the middle. We're going to talk about scale factor. And this is stuff you've seen before, so scale factor. And even the equation, we've kind of looked at this before, said it a couple different ways. I'm going to say the scale factor, or you could just do if you wanted to, like S period, F period, or something like that. I don't know how to write that to S period, F period, equals, um, I think we said like new over original before. Uh, our book writes it as like model over actual. Uh, so model over actual. Or if you wanted to, you could say new over original. I don't know if that helped you, I'll write it in here. But you could skip it if you wanted to, new divided by original. Um, but if we were to take that ratio, take that fraction, another way to write that is, and I think we had this at the beginning of a quiz. But, so model, colon, actual. Or if you wanted to, you could say new divided by the original. I don't know, sometimes I think writing it too many ways makes it more cumbersome rather than making it nicer, but, but you could do something like that. Uh, so I have the little picture I slurped out of the book. If you're drawing this in your notes, you might want to. I just draw two rectangles that are different sizes. Um, if I were, you don't have to have it be like insanely accurate. By the time you get done drawing the gorilla on each, you probably we're going to be done with the problem and on the next page. Uh, but if you have something like this and the question's saying, so example, what's the scale factor? Maybe I'll just do S period, F period, question mark. But what's the scale factor for that? Um, we could go through and you just need to pick corresponding sides. And part of the reason I slurp this is it has like their names there, the model and the actual. But if the actual, if that's like the real building, and then they're drawing a model of it to use to make the movie, um, the model's kind of like that new. So if we go back to what we wrote up there, you could say, all right, the new, easiest is, well, not do the easiest. Say we do this one here. So if we have the new divided by the original, or the model divided by the actual if you wanted to, but if we were to say a 4 over 480, that's going to be our ratio, right? That's our scale factor. But the problem is we always wanted it to be like 1 to something. So the other fraction that we could have done, instead of 4 over 480, we could have done Yeah, if we go with these, you have just like 1 over 120, and it's 1 foot over 120 feet, which is pretty sweet because you're done already. Um, with, with that, if you wanted to, then you could say, all right, 1 foot colon or 1 foot to 120 feet. In other words, 1 foot on your model, 1 foot on that new thing is going to equal 120 feet on the original. And because the units are the same, you could just say 1 to 120 and be done. So that's going to really be probably the best final answer. If instead it was like one inch equals 120 feet, then you'd have to include that in this, this rectangle here in your final answer. If you didn't have that nice way, though, if you go back up to this new divided by original, you could say, all right, I want to take this 4 over 480 and change it into a nice scale factor. So you say, I want it to be 1 to something, so you put the 1 there. And this is what you were doing on that last quiz. Should I quick work through it, though? I guess some people got it wrong on the quiz. Why not? So if we're trying to figure out it's 1 to what, then you could just cross multiply and say, all right, I have 4x, and that's going to equal um, 400, 480 times 1. 
And then if I want to figure out what's x, what goes right here in the bottom, um, which we know should be 120, right? From our other one, it's 1 over 120. But if we didn't know that, then you could figure it out just by saying, all right, I'm going to take this, and to get x by itself, I divide by 4. And 480 times 1 divided by 4 gives us the 120. So we know that it'd have to be 120 right there. Feel okay with that? So that's how to get the scale factor, kind of nice little review there. All right, now next thing, Roman numeral three, is figures are similar if either, um, so figures if either, I'm trying to kind of include the title with some of the work. Um, but, or maybe I should say, look at this. Can you tell, or how can you tell that those two things are similar? Go for it, Ethan. Uh, um, corners are like all the same, like F and S are the same. And Perfect. L and R and yeah. So he said F and S, those angles are both 140. Very nicely done. Uh, L and R, they're both 140, same as each other. The the angle M and angle K, they're both 40. So very good. So it's that, that thing where you need to have like the same angles. Fair enough? Eh, I probably wouldn't bother doing the drawing. But you could say figures are similar if one, corresponding angles are congruent. So corresponding So corresponding angles are congruent. If you do that little symbol, that'll save you a little bit of time. But if it doesn't make sense that that means congruent, then skip it. Maybe I'll write it too are congruent. And congruent is just the math word for equal. It means that the angles that are in the same spot, that's the corresponding, have to be equal to each other. Feel okay with those? So that's one way to do it, and that's by far the nicest, the easiest way. The other way, let's say we had these things here. If you don't know what the angles are, um, and in this case I suppose you kind of do, because if, if this angle here is 37, so if that's 37, this angle here is 90 for that one. So then you could figure out, I'm guessing you're ahead of me, that this here is 53 degrees. Because all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So you could say, all right, I have 180 minus my 90 degree angle right there, minus 37, you get the 53. So kind of a bummer, you can cheat and look. But okay, if you didn't know that was the case, so say I didn't have that 90 degree angle written in there, I didn't have the thing, how could we figure out whether these two things are congruent or similar? Yeah, I'm June. Like, June is one week. Like, the last week, like, we start, like, writing, like, a little script, and then we just, like, go for it. Isn't June one, like, I'm not sure, eighth grade year, and then present at graduation. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It could be fun. All right. I'm not sure how much it ties into what we're doing, necessarily, but the point of that was... So 16 matches up with what side? 12. 12. You kind of have to rotate them in your head, but off of that right angle... Um, this is kind of the thing that you could picture taking that top one and, you know, can I turn it? So now that top one kind of matches up with the other, you know, so you can kind of see that if we're in your right angles in that lower left, the, I'm just messing things up. Oh, yeah! Um, okay. It seems so easy when people aren't watching, but, okay. Then there we go. Okay. If the right angle's on the left, then you have like that straight side coming out of the right angle. But So we could say 12 over 16... If these two are going to be equal, 12 over 16 would have to equal what and what? 9 and 9 and 12. So you could say equals 9 over 12. And now this goes back to what we've done before. We could check this one of a couple ways. One way is to check and see, this was on our last test, I believe, our cross products equal. So does 16 times 9, does that equal 12 times 12? And if you punch them in, you get 16 times 9, well, that's 90 plus 54, so 144. 12 times 12 is 144. So those two ratios are equal. Um, you also then would have to check that other one. You could say, all right, if I do my 12 over 16 again, is that thing there equal to my 15 and my 20? So if I do this here. Now, if I do this, they're not equal. Does anybody see why? What did I screw up? 12 is on my small triangle, 20 is on my big triangle. So you always have to start with the same triangle. 
that if I'm always doing small triangle over big triangle, then this one here would have to be the 15 over 20. And we could again then go and check and see, are those cross products equal? That there gives me 240, this here gives me 240, so I know they're equal. The other option, which quite frankly I like a little bit more, is 12 over 16. You could reduce that, right? You could divide both of those by 4. And if you divide by 4, this gives you a 3, and this gives you a 4. So 12 over 16 is the same as 3 fourths, right? 9 and 12, you could divide them both by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then 15 over 20, you could divide both of those by 5, and you get 3 and 4. So that's another way to do it, just to reduce them all. Or you could, I suppose, if you're allowed to use a calculator, punch it in and get the decimal. Uh, so just do 12 divided by 16 equals, 9 divided by 12 equals, and so on. So I guess I should finish the notes by saying we set up here. Figures are similar if either corresponding angles are congruent or number two. The ratios of corresponding sides are equal. So the ratios of corresponding sides are equal. Maybe the very last thing is to, if we were to write this, you could say triangle UWV. Can you remember what the similar symbol is? Half of a squiggly equals, half of an approximately equals. So nice, saw a couple of people doing it. So triangle UWV is similar to triangle, what order do we have to put those other three letters in? I started with U, went to W, went to V. So now on the other one, I'd have to start with nice X, Y, Z. So, so X, Y, Z. You have to start in the same spot, start with that same degree angle, and work around in the same direction. That's all.